everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Apologies for the delay for some technical difficulties. Uh, so my name is Fiona, and today I'll be presenting about kernel qualification in cloud computing at scale. So first, let me give you a little bit of background about myself and also what I will be talking about in this session. So I'm a software engineer working in Google Cloud, uh, specifically in Google Compute Engine. And during some of my time at Google, I was working on a team responsible for qualifying and deploying the host software to the host machines that's running in cloud, um, including the host kernel, which is the key software on the host. So in this presentation, I'll go over each phase of the kernel qualification, what it involves, and also I'll dive deeper on um, qualifying for performance on host on the host running in cloud, and also how metrics and benchmarks play a vital role. And lastly, I will discuss about the different challenges that we have faced in qualifying the kernel um, at scale. So please bear with me if you already are familiar with all these concepts, but I'd like to first go over, um, so what is cloud computing, how enterprise customers use it, and what is virtualization? So essentially, cloud computing is the on-demand availability of compute resources uh, as a service over the internet, um, such as infrastructure or storage. Uh, businesses or individuals um, don't have to self-manage physical resources themselves. And for example, enterprise companies will run um, either a portion or all of their services on virtual machines. So what is virtualization? Virtualization is the technology that enables us um, to have uh, the hardware resource on a single physical machine to be shared among multiple simulated software programs, um, virtual machines. The virtual machines thinks that it's running on top of hardware, having access to the computer, uh, like CPUs, memory, and storage, when in fact it's partially simulated in software. The hypervisor is what allocates and controls the sharing of the machine's resources. Now, KVM is the hypervisor in the Linux kernel module that provides the virtualization layer by exposing the user space API interface. The virtual machine monitor, VMM, is the process in the user space that talks to the KVM and provides the hardware emulation to the VMs. Now, let's go over the qualification process of a kernel. So for the most part, Google runs on a forked version of the Linux kernel, plus tens of thousands of additional patches for various reasons. For example, Google runs um, on massive scale, and sometimes there are things that are not necessarily applicable to the general usage. So Google makes trade-offs to what makes sense for our usage, and a lot of the time, kernel developers at Google contribute to the open source upstream repo as well but there's still a ton of Google-specific patches that are maintained within Google. So just like in any other development, um, kernel developer write unit tests um, at the time that they're submitting a change um, to make sure that their portion of the code works as intended. Now, as you can imagine, the Linux kernel code base is enormous, and every release has tens and thousands of patches, let alone also the internally managed patches. And a developer working on, say, the manage, a memory management subsystem doesn't necessarily know all the changes going into the kernel, such as in the networking subsystem. So once the changes are checked in, they're being functional tested together on different types of hardware. Then the source code is built into a binary and tested at the application level. At this point, um, the kernel binary is officially put into the qualification pipeline. So first, um, we always run a set of tests, like simple smoke tests, um, to ensure that the kernel meets the minimal functionality and performance requirements, such as booting up a VM, um, executing a se series of commands on a VM, migrating a VM, making sure that the networking is working on the VM, and more. It's so that we catch those trivial issues um, because sometimes they cause uh, the system to, to crash. And if a host crashes too many times, it gets um, auto-checked and flagged as maybe having a hardware defect. And the host will be turned down. Um, there will be actual uh, technicians in data centers that go and go check on the host. And it will take a couple of days, um, at least for this process, for the host to come back up again. 
Um, so once that the kernel passes the minimal criteria, uh, the kernel binary is then deployed into the test environment and installed on a set of test machines uh, for a period of time. Now, the test environment is very crucial to any qualification. We have various testing infrastructure and environment for different use cases. For kernel qualification, it will first go through a more controlled and isolated testbed where the kernel is installed on a set of specific hosts. And we have control on what to install on the host to run different tests. Um, as the qualification progresses, the testbed becomes less configurable, but uh, more similar to what is, run, what is in the prod environment. Um, so everybody uses the kernel for different things, and it's really hard to test all of the scenarios. But we, we work together with the kernel team, the VMM team, the networking team, and other teams who run on top of the kernel to select um, a set of tests that validates both the kernel and the VM behavior. A lot of the time, these tests are provided directly by those teams, actually. So, we can't, so we're really relying on the teams to work together to qualify the kernel. In this test environment where it is more controlled, Different application level tests got, get cross-tested against different hardware. And in addition um, to the host software that I was involved in helping to qualify, other teams are also developing um, software and rolling out things that run on the host to support the cloud environment. So when we do qualification at this stage, we only want one variance and others should all be controlled, which is why we partitioned the test machines into different um, sectors. Some will install the production kernel that was running in cloud already, and some will install the ones that we're qualifying. So other teams can use the, the kernel that's already out in, t in the production to qualify their own product and services. Um, this is also to ensure that the compatibility between the, what's, what we're calling um, for the kernel and what's out there in production on, for all of the other softwares that's running on the host. And in addition, we also test kernel upgrade downgrade. Um, so when we install a kernel on the host and we will install the older version to ensure that there's always a path to roll back if there, if there is a bug in production. So through the qualification process, the test will become more and more larger scoped. And once enough confidence is gained, the kernel candidate is going to get deployed in a, a lot larger number of test machines for load tests, cross cell tests, or like multi-machine tests, and then further into more complex workloads and benchmarks. So as the kernel progresses um, through the qualification stages, as I mentioned, that the test environment will become less configurable, but more, um, more variability is introduced, which is more like to the production environment, where our customers will be running their workload. So in this environment, other teams will also use these machines to be testing their application. Um, a lot of times we don't have control to what's running, what the VMs are running on this, the host because one physical host could, um, can be supporting multiple VMs. But this characteristic is also what we want because it sometimes exposes issues um, during qualification that we want to catch before it gets out to production. In this, in this environment, almost all of the machines will be running the kernel that we're qualifying. So essentially, other teams will be qualifying their services on top of the kernel in, that's in qualification. Um, of course, there is downside um, because we are introducing more than one variance in this test environment. But at the same time, for kernel, we're gaining the additional exposure to the different type of use cases that other teams are running their workloads. And when it comes to qualification, we also have, we, we have to think about both the uh, functional and performance. We can verify the functionalities by running the smoke tests, unit tests, and all those sorts of tests that I mentioned. But for performance, it's a lot more dynamic. And it can sometimes affect, be affected by multiple dimensions. And then, which is why we put the kernel qualification through multiple different environment characteristics. So now let's talk about how we qualify performance for workload running on the kernel. Um, first, the performance of any workload is unique, but we uh, let's simply consider in terms of you know, the baseline uh, threshold. There are multiple dimensions that can affect the performance of a VM. For example, different hardware, different VM families have different capabilities, general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized. 
All of these VM shapes are specifically tailored to run the workload that is suitable for its use case so that it provides better performance for our customers. There are different configurations to uh, support these VM families um, and that they will interact with the kernel differently. So a kernel definitely has to get cross-tested against all of the ranges of host machine hardware at the hardware level as well as the VM that's offered by these hosts. Sometimes different use cases have their own baseline threshold to determine if a performance has regressed or not. Um, depending on the type of workload the guest is running, uh, it may be stressing a different component, whether it's CPU, memory, or disk, and how it interacts with the system is very different, which yields different performance. People use the VM to run various things and require that the VM provide good, constant, stable performance. A kernel may pass some functional tests and a short, um, short-term stress test, but then they could perform very differently um, when it's out in production running at, at the larger scale. So, which is why to qualify for performance, we incorporate benchmarks in running more complex, stress, um, stressful representative cloud workloads in our qualification pipeline to ensure that the components are being stressed at the right level and interacted at a similar level as it would be used by the enterprise services. Sometimes when we see variability in performance, there might be a bug or it could be influenced by the environment. It could be that the host is overloaded and in which case the VM will get migrated to a different host to alleviate that pressure and bring back the VM's performance. Another issue that we commonly see is the noisy neighbor issue um, where one VM running on the host is uh, running a very dominating workload that takes up some of the other resources that's used by the rest of the VMs. So by running benchmarks and cloud workflows for qualification, we have insight into both the host level and the guest level performance metrics. Um, we, we, during qualification, these test workflows are being monitored 24-7 with alerting systems um, that, and with alerting systems and then also the performance metrics are collected and displayed into dashboards for diagnosability um, if ever there's, if there's an alert that gets fired. So let's dive a little bit deeper into benchmarks and cloud workloads. We run benchmarks and cloud workloads to provide us insight on guest VM performance. Um, PerfKit Benchmarker is an open source product. Um, it provides a wrapper around a large range of popular benchmark tools. Listing some here, for example, um, SpecsVU is one that measures speed and rate. Um, it measures you know, how fast a computer completes a single task and then how many tasks a computer can complete in a duration of time. Um, NetPerf is a common benchmark used to uh, measure networking performance. And then uh, MemTier benchmark is a benchmark developed by Redis. It's for load uh, generation and then benchmarking key value databases. Um, especially, uh, essentially, depending on the configuration, uh, supply perfect benchmarker will launch a benchmark. Um, and for example, for Redis Mem tier, it could launch, launch a number of uh, client VMs with a certain read and write ratio that talks to the server and gives enough stress to the server at the right level uh, for, uh, so that we can collect the guest metrics during qualification. Um, it's crucial to set up a benchmark um, or workload in a way that is representative to the prod workloads um, by giving it enough stress and at the right frequency, which is why we work closely with performance teams um, who are domain experts in this area to determine how these benchmarks should be configured to replicate uh, what's similar to production environment. Another aspect to this is how long to run the benchmark. Depending on what we're testing, um, the duration of the benchmark should vary. Uh, for our case, to qualify the kernel, we typically run the benchmark continuously during the qualification period. This is because we want the kernel performance to, um, to be at the expected level for a sustained period of time um, without showing any signs of degradation. Sometimes an, an issue may only surface when the kernel is under a certain level of stress or in a probability one in thousands of chance. So definitely running the kernel um, in qualification on workloads for a sustained period of time will give us additional confidence. 
So I briefly mentioned about you know, host and guest level metrics that we collect during running workloads and benchmarks. On the host level, um, or without any insight into what guest is doing, we can monitor a couple of things. So first, you know, how the host operating system is performing in general, like CPU utilization, memory disk utilization, packet drops, and such. And we, of course, will also have metrics around certain features um, to ensure that it is uh, performing at the expected behavior. And also things on a process level, whether if it's crashed suddenly or if it's terminated for some reason. But we don't necessarily have a ton of information on how the guest VM is actually performing or how the client that talked to the service was running on those VMs, how, what their experience is like. Which is why with workloads during qualification, we have insight into performance on the guest VMs um, created to run the benchmarks or the workloads. So this gives us the information to uh, qualify and ensure that the VM performance, the service that's running on the VM um, is not degrading. Um, similarly to what we care about in the host operating system, we measure the guest operating system. And then these metrics uh, are collected through CloudOps agent tool, uh, which is also available. It uses the open source tool, um, OpenTelemetry, to collect metrics. Additionally, it also support collecting third-party application metrics. Um, so for example, for any like database services that's running on the VM, it collects metrics on how the server is doing. Um, and as well as, uh, for example, Redis Mem tier, you can, it collects on how the latency that's experienced on the client side. So all of these are very important metrics that we collect and use to qualify a host kernel. Um, We often run into obstacles during qualification um, with kernel qualification because the operating system is so complex and that there are so many things running on top of the kernel, there are a lot of factors that can influence performance. And we do get uh, false positives during qualification. So alerts will fire and we will triage the issue, but it could be due to a number of factors that's unrelated to the kernel. So as mentioned, multiple variants is introduced at the later call stages. So a lot of effort will t and time will be taken into triaging a bug. Uh, for example, uh, the noisy neighbor issues. As mentioned uh, before, we can have multiple VMs running on a single uh, physical host. And when a, uh, the performance of a VM is affected by its neighboring performance, um, it's commonly called a noisy neighbor problem. Um, this is caused by various factors such that the VMs share the same CPU memory or networking resources, which can lead to increased latency um, if the bandwidth is taken up by one of the workloads running on the host. Um, there, are also, there are solutions to this. Um, one, it, it doesn't occur on single tenant VMs, uh, which it has its own, so it has, it's running on one host on its own. And then secondly, when we detect that the performance of a certain VM is degrading uh, for this reason, it gets migrated to a different machine. Um, and then thirdly, some resource limits are set, but unfortunately not all resources can be divided and allocated per VM process. So we, we talked a lot about qualifying the kernel, but you know what happens at scale? All of the things that I've mentioned in the kernel qualification pipeline um, happens for one kernel version that we're qualifying. Um, but you might be wondering, like, why can't we just qualify one kernel and then go out to all of the platforms? This in practice is very, cha very challenging as we're expanding so rapidly. Um, so first, upgrading on a host um, is very expensive. Essentially, all of the VMs running on the host will need to get either terminated and restarted or live migrated to a different host machine. Um, for GPU VMs, the VMs get terminated and restarted. And for other VMs, it goes through this process called um, maintenance event or live migration, which during this process, there is a certain level of degradation um, experienced on the VM. So we try to avoid that as much as possible. But of course, we need to balance between getting the new features on a, uh, on the kernel, upgrading the kernel versus um, not disrupting the VMs very frequently. So in the happy path, we qualify one kernel for all of the platforms, throw it out, and 
the machines are performing as expected. But then a lot of the times, um, different VMs and hosts have different characteristics. They might be touching different features on the kernel. And when there is a bug discovered, say in production, um, for only a sub-portion of the family, then for one, we need the ability to roll back only a subset of what was rolled out. Um, otherwise, if we had to roll back everything, the, mach the other machines that are not affected by this bug will get disrupted um, unnecessarily. Um, the customer's services running on those VMs will not have a great experience because they've experienced multiple disruptions in a short period of time. Or if we need to roll forward a fix, that VM family now deviates from the rest of the um, production uh, machines that's running a different kernel version. So similarly, if um, the issue is discovered at the end of the qualification for a subset of the platforms, um, then we have to determine whether the rest of the platform is, needs to wait for that fix to get requalified. And kernel qualification go, um, takes a long time. It has to go through all of these ste uh, qualification steps, as I mentioned, to make sure that a certain fix, even if it's a trivial one, that it is uh, functionally correct and it doesn't degrade the performance in any way. Um, so a lot of the time, this also makes that we don't, we, it's hard to keep one kernel version uh, out there for all of the platforms. And lastly, we have a lot of feature-specific development that gets deployed to certain families, and it's just not going to scale um, if that feature is waiting for everything to finish qualification at the same time. So secondly, as mentioned previously, there are a lot of factors outside of actual kernel bugs that affect the performance. These uh, will create a noisy qualification signal. And sometimes a bug may occur in low probability, but when we catch something in qual, even if it's just once, it could um, appear thousands of times in production just because we have so many machines running in production. And any VM could be running a workload that impacts huge numbers of users, which um, leads to the third challenge, uh, which is having limited resource in qualification some host machines are very rare um, and expensive and a lot of demands out there in production by customers. But we, so, which is why with the resources that we have in qualification, we need to be able to use them efficiently, um, determining what sets of tests should be running on what different hardware instead of running everything um, for all of the platforms. It has to be specific tailored to specific VM families. And um, lastly, the, as the cloud industry is expanding and we, are, we have all these new hardware and new features and new VM offerings for specific workloads, which is great. But it's very important to invest in the infrastructure to qualify and roll out these products so that they can, be, they can provide stable and quality experience for the services that's running on those VMs. Also, the infrastructure has to have automation to reduce manual toil. Um, with a system so complex, and we all know that humans make mistakes, so it's very error prone for, to, to not have sufficient automation in, in the infrastructure to qualify these kernels in parallel and rolling them out to huge numbers of machines. Additionally, um, noisy signal is something we're continuing to struggle with, but investing um, time and resource to solve, which is we have so much product there, and we have a lot of tests and metrics and uh, information collected, which is great. But having a system to take in all of this information and determine whether something is actually regressing is very important as well. So that's all that of my presentation. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we have some time for questions, if anybody have any. Yes? Oh, um. Dude, ah. So I talked about different test beds, right? So for the, the in the early qual stages in the test bed, we 
the machines can have you know, labels on them or put into categories. Uh, and the machines will also have machine names. So in the more configurable stages, we have the ability to um, note that we want this kernel running on this machine with these softwares to run these tests. And this is all provided by infrastructure develop developed by another team. Um, but in the uh, later stages, uh, we although we still have that functionality to do that, um, but generally we like to run a specific set of kernel on a larger pool of machines, say the same uh, platform, hardware platform, or VM families, um, so that we can get a, a more variance of experience, uh, especially to qualify for performance. Or like um, depending on the type of CPU they're running, or by there is uh, a lot of different ways to select them. Yeah. So um, there are other teams that are testing the kernel functionality as well. You know the specific kernel sub teams, as well as you know the networking team. And we run uh, firstly the specific functional tests on the kernel, but also we run an extensive set of end-to-end um, -end tests of the VMs running on the kernel and a lot of different checks to ensure that it is performing as expected. Um, of course, there are bugs. Um, uh, we are constantly improving our test suites, but since the qualification process is very extensive and very long on the kernel, um, typically those, those issues is, uh, catch like in the early stages of qualification. So when measuring a regression, right, uh, as mentioned, we work closely with performance teams. Through time, we have seen, you know, when the, version, when the VM is performing at this level, it is providing good performance and stable, consistent performance on the guest VM. And these are monitored 24-7. You know, uh, one tool out there, cloud monitoring um, in Google Cloud, is something that monitors guest VM performance. And since we already have that stable baseline threshold, whenever something changes, that will raise an alert. And then this is when we, we will start diagnosing um, and triaging if there's an issue in the bug, uh, in the kernel that's causing this uh, performance deviation. Okay. I think there are no more questions. Um, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, I hope you, you all enjoy this presentation. Uh, yeah.